you know, some YouTubers actually change their clothes in between filming multiple videos a day. I do not. <laughs> hey guys, it's Sam, and if you haven't heard already, I've kind of been on a Crayola marker binge recently. This 10 pack of markers has just been a whole buttload of fun and just can't stop using it. <laughs> but apparently Crayola came out with a new set of markers. In fact, they're called blending markers. They look super sleek and professional, and there's, there's none of that like super bright, vibrant yellow. It's this really cool black, like metal tin sort of thing. It comes with 14 markers, a decorative tin, and two colorless blenders. So we're gonna take a closer look inside and see how not only these just perform in general, but I'm also really curious to see how they compare to their traditional just wide 10 pack of markers. <laughs> so let's open her up. not the same. Here are the blending markers. I have not touched them. They're still in the plastic. I'm like shaking excited about this. It was really cool to see actually so many of these uh, types of things. Like I went into a Staples, like an office supply store, and they had like a whole bunch of like really fancy supplies. Like they had acrylics, they had like like the black tins. They had like a bunch of different things. So it's neat that Crayola's kind of branching out to fancy. So let's look at the case first when it comes in. So it's the Crayola Signature Blending Markers. Brilliant colors, perfect for blending. Perfect for blending, we will see. It includes two colorless blenders. Which is interesting. Why two? <laughs> I don't know. But it comes with 14 markers, a decorative tin, and two colorless blenders. It's non-toxic, so I'm assuming it's the same water-based as uh, their original markers, their classics, the ones that I've been using on the back. And I don't know, just here's the back if anybody wants to see the back. So let's open it! Alright, alright, I've been talking enough. Oh, oh, this part, this spot will like sticks out a little bit. This is Crayola. This is really pretty. It's fancy, fancy tin. All right, let's open it up, see what's inside. Nothing really on the back, so let's go. Ooh, here we are, first look inside. Let's take this out. So it's a nice, actually it's a nice metal tin. Um, it's kind of just cheap plastic for the uh, holding them in place. Oh, and that's all it comes with, no paper, no nothing. All right, so here we go. We have bubblegum. Oh, these are all fancy names. Mine didn't get- the classics don't have fancy names, they're just red. Oh, I say as this one is just red. Wisteria, Violet, Cornflower, Blue. So all the different ones like have fancy names. Sea Green, Green, Colorless Blender, Colorless Blender. Uh, Canary, Yellow, Peach, Orange, Slate. I'm gonna guess black. Yep, black. <laughs> No brown, nope, no brown, which is interesting. That is an interesting color to not include in this. There is a peach, but no brown, which makes me wonder why two colorless blenders? I would have loved a brown over at a colorless blender. I wonder if they expect you to be using this a lot and that's why there's two. But let's go ahead and take all of these out. Because if you look on the paper, it's pretty much like a uh, dark light, dark light, dark light, dark light, dark light, extra, extra dark light. <laughs> so it is kind of limited, but yeah, that is bothersome that there's no brown because I do like doing like nature natural pieces and brown is really good for desaturation and stuff like that. Although they're blending markers, so maybe they're like, oh, just blend the brown. Because this is clearly aimed to be a more professional set and not be like a children's thing like their uh, other supplies. Like this, this metal tin, and like the fancy cover and the embossed Crayola at the bottom. Like this definitely is them trying to break into the more student grade. It's kind of a strong term right there. I don't know. I don't know. I don't want to pass too much judgment yet. We haven't even opened them yet. So let's open them first. All right. So let's, uh, I guess, try this one, which is the orange. Oh, <laughs> wow. <laughs> that was really hard to undo. Okay. Maybe it's just like, because it's new. It looks really nice though, like that tip. That's a nice looking tip. All right, so I'll be using my Canson XL Mixed Media, which just because I have extra pages left and it's thicker paper. All right, so let's just swatch these out. Uh, Crayola Signature Blending Markers are permanent when dry and may bleed through the paper. Protect clothing. That's interesting. I thought these were washable. That may stain. Okay, so these ones may stain. These ones will stain. Important differentiation. Contents and colors may vary. <laughs> it's like, does a light color go first or does it go second? Bubblegum. Does it smell like bubblegum? I'm scared now. Ugh! 
It's like a workout to open these sometimes. No, it's not bubble gum. <laughs> I had to make sure. This is very important. Okay, so voiceover new camera Sam time because um, lots of things happened on the stream and I figured it was easier to summarize things instead of just kind of cutting through the stream, which by the way, if you didn't notice, uh, the earlier parts of this video were all done on live stream. I stream on Twitch three times a week. You can check it out. Link in the description anyway about these markers. I was going in these markers kind of ignorant. I got these as a Christmas gift. I did request them. Um, I was interested in these markers. However, I went in with some misconceptions in that I thought these markers were water-based markers, which was why I was so excited because I really loved working with the classic 10 set that they have. And I was like, oh man, they just totally like put out some new stuff. Like I thought this was um, some Tombow competition. I thought this was gonna be really cool. No, it turns out uh, these are all alcohol-based. It is Copic competition. Walked into that with just, just some different thoughts. So I kind of came out of this a little bit unfair. Uh, if I went in with different expectations, I think I would have liked these markers a lot more, but I went in thinking they were water-based. So I kind of had certain expectations. So I was disappointed to find out that they were alcohol-based, but I don't want to say that that's a negative because that's not fair to them. That was my own fault in not really properly researching this ahead of time. So swatching all of these out, I found them to be very good. The color was very fluid and same throughout. Um, on the Canson paper, it did kind of bleed quite a bit. I don't know if that's the paper or the marker or the combination, but these were very liquidy markers. And I actually got out my Copic markers to compare them, especially after I found out that it, they were alcohol based. And as you can see, the blending for as close to the colors of markers that I had with uh, Copic was very, very comparable. And uh, these actually layered quite well too. And uh, you could multiple, like you could lay down one layer and then layer another and another and another and get like continuously darker colors. So that was awesome. So in terms of blendability, I would say that these are blendable, but there are some caveats. So let's go ahead and get there first because that's just kind of where I feel my heart is right now with these not being water-based. <laughs> my own fault, I know I'm dumb. Anyway, so some caveats with these markers, which is um, taking off the caps. Let's first talk about the marker. The marker is a cylindrical barrel. There is no uh, sort of extended part of the marker to stop it from rolling. So I had quite a few issues of it rolling. All the markers were rolling around the table all the time. That was a little bit of a nuisance. Um, the other thing was the caps. The caps were on a few of them quite difficult to take off. So I guess that means they're well protected, but because of that, and because these markers are built specifically to have a splatter effect as a function for these markers, kind of splattered all over my table. <laughs> That's just something to keep in mind is lay down some, some newspaper or something. People still, still, still have newspaper. To... Anyway, back in my day when I was crafting as a kid, my mom put down newspaper. Anyway, so these do splatter. Be aware of that. Another thing I noticed is the tips. While they are great tips, they were very nice, quite flexible and uh, very workable. Quite a few things that were issues for me there. I like to work small, so this might not affect you, but working small plus the combination of either the paper or the marker with the bleed, it was very, 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 very difficult to get small, smooth, like thin lines. It was basically impossible. So working at a small size, if you like to do that like I do, probably not the best for that. Um, the other thing I noticed is that a few of the markers, not all of them, we're starting to have the tips fray just a bit and given the little amount of use that I've used them for I don't think it was very little fraying but I don't think there should have been any at all I also don't think it should have come with two blendable markers I mentioned this on the stream but my assumption was uh, that they don't sell these in individual sets so you can't buy the individual markers so because of that they wanted to make sure that the customer was satisfied and if they use the blender a lot they didn't want people to complain so they added two blendable markers just so if you quickly ran out of one, you would have a backup. That's my suspicion. Don't think that was the smart decision. I think they should have just had one and they should have replaced it with a brown. Right now, the colors that they had available, um, just personal nitpick on my end, it might not apply to you. Um, but I wasn't a big fan of the options. I prefer to work with more desaturated, more natural colors 
These colors are kind of your standard Crayola bright rainbow, like in your face colors, which work actually quite nicely sometimes with their uh, water soluble, their water based markers. But for these alcohol based markers, mm, not so much for me. <laughs> I actually found myself enjoying the more lighter pastel colors more just because they weren't so punchy in your face and they felt a little bit more usable because of that. However, going along with that, I still found these markers to be quite usable. In fact, I found them to be very comparable to when I've done limited palettes with my Copic marker landscape studies I've done in the past. The results are very, very close, if not like, it's like very difficult to kind of see the difference between them, but the main differences are just you can't get thin strokes. And then with uh, Copic markers, the ink flow is less pronounced. You have much less ink coming out all at once. Whereas the Crayola, it's quite a consistent big load of ink coming out. Um, but with Copic, there's a little bit more flexibility there because of the slow ink flow. It also allows for more feathering. You can kind of get more of a gradient control. Whereas with Crayola, it's kind of, it's consistent throughout. So that's like a plus or minus take your pick depending on how you want to use your markers. But for landscape studies, despite the fact that their colors were quite artificial, I still found it to be just fine. And otherwise like very similar, if not the same of my experience with Copic markers. But I know not everybody who follows me does landscape studies like I do. So I decided to try a few different things with these markers. The first thing I did is, um, try and do a self-portrait. I graphite transferred two uh, self-portraits of mine onto the same Canson paper and I did the first one with just the Crayola markers and then I did the second one with a mix of Copic and Crayola just to see if they can kind of work together and also give me access to brown because wow that is a big complaint of mine that there is no brown. So I'm kind of up in the air with how I feel about these. I struggled quite a bit trying to get some sort of skin tone down, trying to get that brown. The best brown I could make was with the uh, red and the green color, just the normal bright red and green. And that's kind of how I tried to get a brown. And I tried to lay some of the slate and the black on top. It was a mess. I didn't really have a super enjoyable time. It was kind of more stressful, which is unfortunate. So skin tones with the lack of brown, very, very, very difficult. I can't imagine getting too broad of a range of skin tones with these, especially without the brown and just desaturated colors. Like if you do pop art, that sort of thing, you really like punchy colors, you really like that sort of thing, you can make passes with this just fine. Like this is probably a good set for you. So the second portrait attempt, I used Copic with it and that made it a lot easier, but I still had quite a difficult time, mostly with the skin tones. I might get more used to it the more I use it. I might be able to figure out some sort of tricks or techniques with these colors, but at the moment, just first and Impressions, didn't have the best time and uh, tried my best, <laughs> but it didn't really click with me uh, too quickly. By the way, I totally forgot that I didn't mention this so far, but the blending markers that it comes with, the two blending markers are exactly the same as the Crayola Colorless Blender, therefore it's not an actual blender, it's just alcohol in a marker. Not, not really a surprise, not disappointed, not anything, it's just like, yeah. That's expected. So I do think they can work compatibly with Copic and since they can work with Copic uh, well enough, I think they can work just fine with pretty much any alcohol-based marker. So if you're looking for more markers but you don't have the money for it, and you're looking for cheaper options, this isn't too bad of a set. I mean, I know I kind of hit on it a few times, but I mean, if you already have other supplemental materials to uh, use with it, maybe it's colored pencils or other markers or something like this isn't a bad set. And I think you can do quite a lot with it. That said, Crayola, please talk to the community next time you wanna try and branch outside your normal brand. We don't need two colorless blenders, we need a brown. Anyway, this last drawing, ignore the wonkiness of it. I was just kind of playing around. Just testing out if you did an actual character with this, and I think it worked just fine. I mean, I kind of colored it a little badly, but <laughs> aside from that, like, I think you can kind of do some sort of cell shaded stuff or maybe play around a little bit more and get some sort of soft shaded things. But in terms of the character, I think it went relatively fine. It was relatively smooth. I mean, I finished coloring it very quickly, and I also, I also tried out the, uh, the splatter thing, which was more difficult than I thought it was going to be. Like, it splattered very, very easily, but the direction and aiming was a bit more difficult. Maybe I'm just dumb, but I had a little bit of a struggle with it. But aside from that, I think it was okay. I think it worked all right. So like I said, biggest downsides for me was the two colorless blenders. We only need one. It really needs a brown and I would have really loved it if it didn't bleed so much and I could have gotten much thinner, more detailed lines. I think those were my biggest by far uh, like complaints, I guess, about this. But other than that, 
This could be a nice travel set, a, could, a good little junk set to take around. It's not very expensive, it's under $20. At least on Amazon it's under $20. I'll put a link to it in the description to go check it out. So I guess the end all be all question is, do I think it's worth it? Well, for me, I don't know if it's something that I would buy again. I think it's a nice junk set to do some little studies, do nothing drawings with. If you're young or inexperienced with artists, I think this could be a nice introduction set to alcohol-based markers. Is it going to be replacing these though? Probably not. I'm probably going to stick to these markers. And in fact, since I'm liking water-based markers so much right now, maybe I'll check out Tombow sometime soon. Maybe. We'll see. But right now I think my biggest Crayola marker love is with these original <laughs> markers. But hopefully you guys enjoyed this video. If you've tried out these markers and you have any experience with these, please let me know how that went in the comments down below. I'd love to hear other people's experience with this. If you'd like to check out other product review videos, because I've done quite a few, feel free to check out the playlist linked in the card. I think it's over there. <laughs> I'll also put a link in the description down below. So if you're looking for other Copic marker alternatives, I've reviewed other ones too. Also, if you have a favorite marker brand, feel free to let me know what that is in the comments down below. I'm really curious. Don't feel obligated to say Copic because right now I think we all know what I'm, I'm in love with. <laughs> I'm gonna let you guys go, so hopefully you enjoyed. I'll see you in the next video and thanks so much for watching. Bye!